Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy clinic with me, Music Theory Guy. If you've got a question about music theory, this is the place to get it answered. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me an email or you can contact me via Facebook or Twitter. And that's precisely what Gilberto Torres from Los Angeles has done. He's written to me and he wants to know about repeats. Now in this video, which is the fifth of a series of six videos on repeats, I'm going to be looking at repeated whole measure rests. Let's have a look. OK, now let's imagine you're playing the trombone in an orchestra. Now, it doesn't really matter what instrument it is, but just for the benefit of this example, I'm going to show you some trombone music. Now, as you can see, there's lots of notes in this very short piece of music, but there are also some bars or measures that don't have anything at all. Here's one, two, three, four, five. And then there's another two just down here. Now, rather than writing a series of empty bars or measures, we can use this symbol. This means repeated whole measure rests. In other words, there's a number five above that thick black line. We could use that symbol, the black line and that five, to replace those five empty bars or measures. Now, just before we go any further, just be aware that that thick black line can be shorter. And here's an example with four. And here's an example with three, but sometimes be aware it can just be a standard size. So here's one with 32, which is exactly the same length as five. So the length of that thick black line makes no difference at all. What you're looking for is the number above it. So what we can do, we can rewrite that trombone piece of music and we can replace those five whole measure rests with this whole measure rest symbol. And at the bottom, you can see I've done the same for the two empty bars or measures as well. Now it's worth talking about how we count rests as we're looking at whole measure rests. This is something I find that students often trip up on and they're not used to counting lots and lots of rests in a, a very long orchestral piece of music. So let's focus in on these five repeated whole measure rests. Now you could go one, two, three, four, and you could repeat that five times. But the problem is, imagine you've got 32 bars or measures rest. Actually, counting 32 of them is quite complicated. So what musicians do, rather than going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, they will change the first number of that set of 1, 2, 3, 4, and it will increment by 1 every time they count. So what they'll do this time, as there's 5 bars or measures rest, they will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so on until they get to 5, 2, 3, 4, and then they carry on playing. That first number is a really helpful indicator of how many bars or measures they've counted so far. So looking at the two repeated whole measure rests at the bottom of our music, the way we'd count this, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, and then we'd play that very last note. OK, so let's have a listen to this trombone part and I'll add in how we count those repeated whole measure rests as well. And that's pretty much it when it comes to repeated whole measure rests. All you've got to look out for is that thick black line and the number above it. And that number above it will tell you how many bars or measures that you've got to count where you're not playing. OK, well, I hope that's been useful to you, Gilberto, and anybody else that's been watching. If any of you have any further questions about music theory, please do get in touch. I look forward to receiving your emails and messages via Twitter and Facebook. In the meantime, Many thanks for watching. The fifth video in a series of six videos, I'm going to be looking at repeated whole bar rests. That's not what I'm looking at. It's not. It's just not. I lied. I lied to you. Liar. Hello and welcome to the Music Theory Guy with...